Okay, I'm Patrick Bond. I'm director of the Center for Civil Society at the University of KwaZulu Natal's Built Environment and Development Studies School in Durban, in South Africa. Yeah, we uh, work at the uh, confluence of political economy and political ecology, so it's a wide variety in the most uh, unequal major society in the world, South Africa, with pretty much the world's leading rate of social protest uh, per capita. Uh, and in a place like Durban, all these contradictions and tensions are thrown into very sharp relief, especially with highly racialized uh, incidents of, of environmental injustice. And um, as an example, in South Durban, where I also live, uh, the uh, traditionally black, uh, so-called colored and Indian, uh, areas are under extreme threat from uh, toxic emissions and for uh, the last year or so uh, have also been fighting an expansion of the port, which is Sub-Saharan Africa's largest, uh, and the petrochemical complex, the largest refinery complex in Africa. The expansion over the next 30 years, they suggest, will be by a factor of eight in a uh, part of uh, South Africa we call the armpit. Uh, it's absolutely um, rancid and uh, super saturated with toxics. And so the strategy for the South Urban Community Environmental Alliance with the Center for Civil Society giving all sorts of background support, technical assistance and uh, connectivities to other struggles around the world, would be to envisage um, a critique that extends beyond uh, simple rejection and, and uh, NIMBY, not in my backyard, which has never really been a problem in South Durban. There's very visionary activists. Uh, one, Bobby Peake, had won the Goldman Award. Another leader, Desmond Desai, is well known in the, in the world uh, environmental justice circuitry. Um, and it's to think through how um, we can establish the critique of the particular location, South Durban, as a toxic site under this threat of expansion and displacement. Um, as more than just one site, but um, as a way of uh, capital accumulation and despoilation of nature and uh, especially the implications for uh, the lower income black uh, residents and for women and children who, uh, especially at a school uh, right in the heart of this refinery complex, 52% of the kids in this primary school, settlers primary, uh, have asthma, the highest rate recorded in the world. And that means uh, a great many people have invo been involved in struggling against uh, the corporate state nexus. And in this next stage of struggle, that will continue as we hope to bring also climate justice into the equation. Well, the change has to be about the um, mode of uh, production. Uh, capitalism in South Africa has had a uh, really terribly uh, adverse reliance upon minerals and energy and extraction and their export. Uh, usually unprocessed, and the extent to which we process minerals involves vast amounts of electricity in smelters, which is uh, a terrible waste of energy and, uh, and use of coal, giving us a very, very high emissions per capita rate. Um, and that has to change, and that means the infrastructure investments that are being planned, uh, and it's in the range of over $100 billion for the main uh, port uh, company, the uh, Transnet, the 100 billion includes the rails and it includes uh, new lines that will take uh, coal for export, as well as South Durban's expansion of this huge port complex. And our argument is that um, this has to change so that the infrastructure investments are made, but not in extractive uh, pro-corporate activities, but in housing and clinics and uh, water systems, because our water uh, in Durban is becoming increasingly uh, dodgy. And the, the um, electricity that we need to replace paraffin and wood and coal inside people's houses with cleaner electricity. And these are the kinds of things, especially renewable electricity, these are the kinds of things where uh, the investments are needed. But to do that means a power shift. And with the ruling party, which is crony capitalist with the minerals energy complex and uh, the big commercial circuits of capital, uh, we are really talking about a challenge that I think will raise the big question, is capitalism in South Africa capable of becoming more sustainable? Or do we need a new mode of production as we try to detox South Durban that would be eco-socialist in nature? Yeah, there are some who think that environmental justice can be achieved within the limits of capitalism. And in very localized settings, I'm sure that's true. The, uh, the bigger question is whether, especially for climate, the um, profit system and the ability to externalize uh, such a large number of 
uh, environmental and social problems by capital and just dump those problems onto uh, ill-defended uh, nature and people, uh, can that be halted within the mode of production? Or should we look for a just future through uh, transition to eco-socialism in which the profit motive, even in parastatal corporations, which if not privatized are commercialized in preparation for privatization, uh, these are now part, a big part of the problem in most of the societies as the neoliberal era has uh, commodified everything and pushed even uh, states to become part and parcel of that accumulation process. Uh, are there eco-socialist uh, models for us? Not really yet. I mean, in Cuba, they, for example, were able to get off the fossil fuel addiction with their extensive planning capacity, um, as they had to because of their uh, relationship with the Soviet Union collapsing. But I think our genuine strategies are uh, from bottom-up uh, and participatory approaches in which those who lack basic needs in our large community of about three, 400,000 people in South Durban, for example, would take over an old airport area for housing. And maybe that'll involve an Occupy a land invasion, and the group Mlazi has done that kind of an Occupy before. And in some of the other uh, light industrial areas that have got some potential for more labor-intensive activity, a switch to production for local consumption of the kinds of things we're now importing into this large port, cheap appliances and furniture and uh, clothing and textiles that are coming from East Asia in these huge container ships, and replacing those import substitutions so we localize the economy would be another step, a, a non-reformist reform, shall we say, along that road to a just eco-socialist society.